Today we're going to talk about standing waves. So what exactly are standing waves and how can they be created? Let's say if we have a string that is attached to two fixed ends. And if we apply a tension force, and if we pull the string then release it, it's going to create a standing wave pattern. Now there's different types of standing waves that you can get. You might get a standing wave that looks like this. You can get a standard wave that looks like this. Now granted, because it's vibrating so fast, it might appear to be, it might look something like this. Whereas this one, if it's vibrating fast, it's going to look something like that. Now it's called a standing wave because it appears not to move in the x direction. Some waves, you can see them moving along the x direction, but the standard wave, it doesn't appear to move because it's fixed at both ends. Thus, it's called a standard wave. Now, let's talk about these shapes. If you have just one standing wave, n is equal to 1. If you have a pattern with two standard waves, n is equal to 2. If you get three standard waves, n is equal to 3. Now, each of these standard waves have the same length, because if we draw the original picture, the length of the string is fixed. So even though they don't appear to be the same, the length is actually the same. Just keep that in mind. So this is equal to the length of the string, L. This is also equal to the length of the string. It's not drawn to scale. And this is L as well. Now, the wavelength and L is associated with this equation. L is one half the wavelength. This is one full cycle. So basically, the length of two standard waves is equal to one wavelength. So for the second one, L is equal to the wavelength. The subscript corresponds to the end value. It tells you that there's two standard waves in that shape. So for the next one, where we have three standard waves, L is going to equal 3 over 2 times the wavelength. So the equation that relates L and the wavelength is this equation. L is equal to N times the wavelength divided by 2. L is equal to N times the wavelength divided by 2. Now, if you rearrange the equation to solve for the wavelength, it's going to be 2 times L divided by N. Now all of these standard waves, they occur at the natural frequencies or at the resonant frequencies of the string. So if you use a different material, that can affect the standard waves that are produced. Now let's talk about the frequency. Let's say that L is 0.5. And let's say the frequency for the, the first standard wave pattern is 100 hertz. This frequency is known as the fundamental frequency. Standard waves, they contain multiple frequencies. The other frequencies are multiples of the fundamental frequency. So F2, which corresponds to this particular standard wave pattern, the one that has two standard waves, this is equal to 200 hertz. This is known as the second harmonic. F1, the fundamental frequency, is known as the first harmonic. F3, this is the third harmonic, which is 300 hertz. F2 and F3, and anything beyond that, are known as overtones. So as you can see, as the number of standard waves increases, the frequency increases. 
so the frequency is proportional to the n value. The frequency fn is basically equal to n times f1. We'll talk about how to derive this equation shortly. Now let's talk about the wavelength. As you can see, the wavelength is 2L divided by N. So 2 times 0 0.5, which is 1. And when N is 1, that's L, I mean the wavelength is going to be 1. So the wavelength that corresponds to the first standard wave pattern, in this example, is 1 meter. Now what about the next one, when we have two standard waves, when N is 2? So notice that the frequency increases with the n value, but the wavelength is going to decrease. Because the frequency increased by a factor of 2, the wavelength is going to decrease by a factor of 2. So originally it was 1 meter, but now it's going to be 1 half of a meter. Now what if we triple the n value? What if there's three standard wave patterns? Notice that the frequency increased by a factor of 3. So therefore, the wavelength it's going to decrease by a factor of 3. So it's going to be one-third of its original value. So lambda 3 is going to be 1 over 3, or one-third of a meter. So whenever n increases, that is the number of standard waves, the wavelength will decrease, and the frequency will increase. Now we said that the natural frequencies can be found from this equation. It's n times the fundamental frequency. But let's derive this equation. The velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So if we solve for the frequency, it's the velocity of the wave or the speed divided by the wavelength. So therefore, fn is equal to v divided by wavelength n. But I'm going to separate them into two fractions. So basically, all I did was I added a subscript to this equation. So now, we have the equation for the wavelength. We said the wavelength is equal to 2 times L divided by n. So then, 1 over lambda n is the reciprocal of this fraction. So that's uh, n over 2L. So let's replace this expression with n over 2L. So therefore, fn is equal to v over 1 times n over 2L. Now, referring back to this equation, lambda 1 is equal to 2L divided by 1, which is simply 2L. So therefore, we can replace 2L with lambda 1. So Fn is equal to V times N divided by lambda 1. Now, what can we do at this point? Well, let's get rid of this first. So as we said before, the wavelength times the frequency is equal to the speed. And the frequency is the speed divided by the wavelength. So Fn is V divided by lambda n. So F1, if we replace the n value with 1, that's going to be V divided by lambda 1. So we can rewrite this expression as n times v over lambda 1. So we have this equation, fn is equal to n times f1. We can replace this with um, f1. So there's a lot of equations that we can use. But let's write down the important ones. Let's review it real quick. So if you know the fundamental frequency, you can find any natural or resonant frequency using this equation, where n is the number of standard waves. 
if you know the speed of the wave and the length of the string, you can find any harmonic using this equation. So if you want to find the first harmonic, which is the fundamental frequency, n is 1. If you're looking for the second harmonic, which is the first overtone, n is 2. The third harmonic, or the second overtone, n is 3. Now we also know that the wave speed is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And if you need to find the wavelength of any standard wave pattern, it's 2L divided by N. Now, if you need to find the length of the string, you can use this equation. It's N times the wavelength divided by 2. So you need to know how many standard waves there are and also the wavelength that corresponds to the standard wave pattern that you see. Now, in another video, I went over the wave speed that can be calculated if you apply a tension force on a string. The wave speed is equal to the tension force divided by the linear density, which is the mass per unit length. And of course, the square root of that result. So that's how you can calculate the wave speed. And once you have the wave speed, you can find the wavelength for the frequency. So these are the six main equations that you need to know. If you know these six equations, you should be fine. Now there's one more topic that I need to discuss before we go into solving problems. Let's say if you have this particular standard wave pattern. What are the nodes and the antinodes? Let's say this is the horizontal line. The nodes are the locations where the amplitude is equal to zero. The antinodes is where maximum displacement occurs. So this is an antinode. Here we have a maximum value. Here we have a minimum value, so that's also an antinode. So for a standard wave pattern of, let's say, an n value of 2, where we have two standard waves, notice that there's three nodes, 1, 2, 3, and two uh, anti-nodes. At the anti-node, constructive interference occurs, since we have uh, the amplitude is at a maximum value. At the node, the amplitude is at its minimum value. It has a value of 0. Destructive interference occurs at the node. So do you need to know all of this for the test? Maybe, maybe not. You may be tested on it. It may not happen. Who knows? But just in case you do see it on a test, you now know what to do, how to answer these questions. So just remember, constructive interference occurs at the anti-node and destructive interference occurs at the node. So here's the first question. A standard wave has five loops. How many nodes and antinodes are present? Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So n is equal to five. Now let's count how many nodes are present. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice that the number of nodes is always equal to n plus 1. So in this case, it's 6. Now how many antinodes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 5 antinodes. So the number of antinodes is always equal to the n value. In this case, 5. So now you know how to find the number of nodes and antinodes. It's either n or n plus 1. Here's another one for you. The fundamental frequency of a certain standard wave is 175 hertz. Calculate the first four harmonics. 
the fundamental frequency is the first harmonic, which is F1, and that's 175 hertz. Now to find the other harmonics, we can use the equation Fn is equal to n times F1. So if we wish to find the second harmonic, it's simply 2 times the fundamental, or 2 times 175, which is 350. So that's the second harmonic. To find the third harmonic, it's 3 times 175, which is 525. And finally, the fourth harmonic, or the third overtone, this is going to be 4 times 175. And that's 700 hertz. So that is it for this question. Now in this problem, we're given the seventh harmonic. Using that information, how can we find the fourth harmonic and the ninth harmonic? What would you do? Now the best thing to do is to use the seventh harmonic to find the first harmonic. Once you have the first one, then you could find any harmonic that you need. So Fn is equal to n times F1. So the seventh harmonic is going to be seven times the first harmonic. F7 is 280 hertz. So if we divide 280 by 7, we can get the first harmonic, which is 40. Now that we have the value of the fundamental frequency, we can find the fourth harmonic, which is just going to be 4 times the first harmonic, or 4 times 40, which is 160. So that's the value of the fourth harmonic. Now to find the ninth harmonic, it's simply 9 times F1, which is 9 times 40. 9 times 4 is 36, so 9 times 40 is going to be 360. So it's 360 hertz. A 2 meter string produces a standing wave with 3 loops. Therefore, n is equal to 3. The length of the string is 2 meters. So what is the wavelength? The wavelength is basically the distance of two loops. Now, instinctively, you can see that the distance of one loop is going to be two meters divided by three, or two thirds. So for two loops, it's going to be four thirds. Three loops, six thirds, which is two. So you can just look at it and see that it's going to be four over three. But using the equation, we can get the same answer. And the equation that we need is the wavelength is equal to 2L divided by N. So this is the wavelength of the third harmonic. So it's 2 times L, which is 2, divided by N, which is 3. So it's 4 over 3 meters, which is 1.3 meters. Now that we have the wavelength, what is the frequency if the speed of the wave is 45 meters per second? The equation that we need is V is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So solving for F, the frequency is the speed divided by the wavelength. So the speed is 45 and the wavelength is 4 divided by 3. So 45 divided by 4 thirds or 1.333 repeating is about 33.75 hertz. So that is the frequency. And this frequency corresponds to the third harmonic. So let's write down what we know. We know the wavelength of the third harmonic is about 1.333 meters. And the frequency that corresponds to the third harmonic is 33.75 hertz.
Now let's find the fundamental frequency, or the frequency that corresponds to the first harmonic. So Fn is equal to n times F1. Therefore, F3 is 3 times F1. So 33.75 equals 3 times F1. So we need to divide it by 3. So the fundamental frequency is 11.25 hertz. Now what about the fundamental wavelength? As you mentioned before, whenever you increase the end value, the frequency will increase, but the wavelength is going to decrease. So we can write a similar equation. We can say that lambda n is basically lambda 1 divided by n. So to find the first wavelength, or the, the wavelength of the first harmonic, it's n times lambda n. So it's going to be 3 times 1.333, which is a wavelength of 4 meters. Now I do want to mention something, and that is the speed is constant. You can find the speed by multiplying lambda 3 times f3, or by multiplying lambda 1 times f1. So if you take uh, 1.333 and multiply it by 33.75, you're going to get 45 meters per second. And if you multiply 4 times 11.25, you will get the same answer, 45 meters per second. So as n increases, the frequency will increase, the wavelength will decrease, but the speed will remain constant. The wavelength of a standing wave with one loop is 12 meters. Find the wavelength of the first five harmonics. So let's begin. So the first wavelength is 12 meters when n is 1. And we know the wavelength in terms of n is going to be the fundamental wavelength divided by n. So wavelength 2 is basically 12 divided by 2, or 6 meters. The wavelength of the third harmonic is going to be 12 divided by 3, which is 4 meters. The wavelength of the fourth harmonic is 12 divided by 4, which is 3 meters. And the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is 12 divided by 5, which is 2.4 meters. And that's it for this question. Go ahead, take a minute, pause the video, and try this one. So the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is 1.8 meters. So lambda 5 is 1.8 m. Calculate the wavelength of the ninth harmonic. So we know lambda n is lambda 1 divided by n. So if we rearrange the equation, lambda 1 is lambda n times n. So let's find the first wavelength or the wavelength that corresponds to the first harmonic. So lambda 1 is going to be lambda 5 times 5, if n is 5. So lambda 1 is going to be 1.8 times 5. 1.8 times 5 is 9. So the wavelength that corresponds to the fundamental frequency is 9 meters. Now, to find the wavelength that corresponds to the, the ninth harmonic, we can use this equation. So lambda 9 is lambda 1 over 9. So it's 9 meters divided by 9, which is 1 meter. So that is the wavelength that corresponds to the ninth harmonic. 
A Stannin wave with a speed of 30 meters per second and five loops has a frequency of 250 hertz. What is the length of the string in centimeters? So let's make a list of what we have. So we have the speed, which is 30 meters per second, and the Stannin wave has five loops, so n is equal to five. And we have the frequency, which must be the fifth harmonic. So that's 250 hertz. So what equation should we use to find the length of the string? Well, we can use this one. L is equal to n times lambda divided by 2. But before we can use that equation, we need to find the wavelength. So we can use this equation to do that. V is equal to lambda times f. So if we're using the fifth harmonic, then we need to use the wavelength that corresponds to that as well. So V is 30. The wavelength that corresponds to the fifth harmonic, we're looking for that. The frequency of the fifth harmonic is 250. So the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is going to be 30 divided by 250 which is 0.12 meters. So now we can find L. Keep in mind N is 5. So L is going to be 5 times the wavelength of the fifth harmonic divided by 2. So that's 5 times 0.12 divided by 2, which is about 0.3 meters. Now we want the answer in centimeters. 0.3 meters is equal to 30 centimeters if we multiply by 100. So this is the answer for part A. Now what about part B? If the string has a mass of 40 grams, what tension force is required to produce such a wave? Now let's keep in mind that the length of the string is 0.3 meters. Now we know that the wave speed can be calculated using this equation. It's the square root of the tension force divided by the linear density. So let's solve for f in this equation. Let's square both sides. So v squared is going to be equal to f divided by m divided by l. So let's multiply both sides by well first before we multiply both sides by anything let's multiply this fraction top and bottom by l. Let's rearrange the equation. So these two will cancel. So v squared is equal to f times l divided by m. Now let's multiply both sides by m. So the force times the length is equal to the mass times the square of the velocity. So now we can divide both sides by l. So the force is the linear density mass over length times v squared. We need to convert the mass in grams to kilograms. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So 40 divided by a thousand is 0 0.04 kilograms. So F is going to be the mass, which is 0 0.04 kilograms, divided by the length, which is 0.3 meters, times the square of the speed, which is 30 meters per second squared. 30 squared is 900 times 0 0.04. That's 36 divided by 0 0.3 is 120. So the tension force that's required to produce such a wave is 120 newtons.
Go ahead and pause the video. Work on this problem. See if you can get the right answer. And then unpause it when you're ready. So a tension force of 300 newtons was applied to a 0.75 kilogram string that is 5 meters long. A standard wave with 5 loops was produced. Calculate the speed. So V is equal to the square root of F, the tension force, divided by the linear density. Well, let's calculate the linear density first. The mass of the string is 0.75 kilograms. And the length of the string, it's 5 meters long. So 0.75 divided by 5 is equal to 0.15. So the linear density is 0.15 kilograms per meter. So what this means is that a 1 meter section of this string has a mass of 0.15 kilograms. 2 meters of this material has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. So 5 meters of the string has a mass of 0.75 kilograms. So now let's plug it into the equation to find the speed. The tension force is 300 and let's divide it by 0.15. 300 divided by 0.15 is 2,000, and the square root of 2,000 is about 44.72 meters per second. So that's the answer to part A. Now what about part B? What is the wavelength that corresponds to this particular standard wave? What equation can we use to find the wavelength? Now keep in mind, since the standard wave has five loops, we have the n value, n is five. So we're looking for the wavelength that corresponds to the fifth harmonic. Let's use this equation. Lambda n is equal to 2L divided by n. The length of the string is 5 meters long. And n is also 5, so these two cancel, which means that lambda 5 is 2 meters. So that is the wavelength that corresponds to the fifth harmonic, which is the answer to part b. Now what about part C? What is the frequency that corresponds to this standard wave, or what is the frequency of the fifth harmonic? V is equal to lambda times F. So if we're going to use the harmonic, I mean the wavelength that corresponds to the fifth harmonic, we need to use F5 as well. So V is 44.72, the wavelength is 2, so therefore, the frequency must be 44.72 divided by 2. So the frequency of the fifth harmonic is 22.36 hertz. Now what is the fundamental frequency and the frequency of the first three overtones? We're going to calculate it using two methods or two different equations. So we know that Fn is equal to n times F1. So F5 is basically 5 times F1. So the fundamental is basically the fifth harmonic divided by 5. So if we take 22.36 and divide it by 5, we can see that the fundamental is 4.472 hertz. Now, if we wish to find the first overtone, which is the second harmonic, it's 4.472 times 2, which is 8.944. The second overtone, which is the third harmonic, that's 4.472 times 3, and that's 13.416. The third overtone, or the fourth harmonic, 
is 4.472 times 4. Now the other equation that we can use is this one. The frequency of any harmonic is the speed of the wave times n divided by 2 times the length of the string. We have the speed and the length of the string so we can use it. So if you want to find the first harmonic it's going to be the speed which is, what was the speed again? I may have to recalculate it because I didn't write it down. speed was 44.72. The end value for the first harmonic is 1 and the length of the string is 5 meters. So it's 44.72 divided by 10 which will give us 4.472. Now let's say if we want to find the third overtone which is the fourth harmonic. It's going to be the speed 44.72 times an end value of 4 divided by 2L. So 44.72 times 4 divided by 10, which will give you 17.88. So that's another equation that you could use if you know the speed and the length of the string. Here's the last question for today. The frequency of the fourth harmonic is 300 Hertz. That is F4 is 300 and the wavelength of the second harmonic is 2.3 meters so lambda 2 is 2.3 what is the speed of the wave so notice that we can't use this equation because the subscripts don't match they have to share the same end value so how can we find the speed of the wave well something that we can do is we could find the length of the string. Once we have the length of the string, we can find the speed of the wave using this equation. So let's calculate the length of the string. So using this information, n is 2 and lambda 2 is 2.3 divided by 2. So the length of the string is 2.3. The 2's cancel. So now we could find the speed. Let's rearrange this equation. Let's multiply both sides by 2L. So 2L, or 2 times 2.3 times F4, is equal to the speed times an n value of 4. These two must match. 2 times 2.3 is 4.6, and F4 is 300. So the speed is going to be 4.6 times 300 divided by 4. So the wave speed is about 345 meters per second. Now is there another way in which we can get the same answer? It turns out that there is. We can get it by using this equation. However, the subscripts have to match. So what we're going to do is find a wavelength and a frequency that corresponds to the first harmonic. So Fn is equal to n times F1. So F4 is equal to 4 times F1. Therefore, 300 is 4 times F1. So F1 is 300 divided by 4. So the fundamental frequency is 75 hertz. Lambda n is lambda 1 divided by n. So lambda n times n is lambda 1, which means lambda 2 times 2 is lambda 1. So 2.3 times 2 is 4.6, which is the wavelength that corresponds to the first harmonic. So lambda 1 is 4.6, f1 is 75. If we multiply 
4.6 by 75, we get the same answer, which is 345 meters per second. So that's another way in which you can calculate the wave speed for this particular example. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I really hope that you found it to be educational and useful. So make sure you do well on your next exam.